Please stand for the opening hymn. Within my heart, a melody Jesus whispers sweet and low. Fear not, I am with thee, peace be still in all of life's ebb and flow. Jesus, 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 sweetest name I know, fills my every singing as I go. All my life was wrecked by sin and strife. This God filled my heart with pain. Jesus swept across the broken strings, stirred the slumbering chords again. Jesus, 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 sweetest name I know. Fills my every longing, keeps me singing as I go. Though sometimes he leads through waters deep, trials fall across the way. I'm gonna die with us, he's running them. Jesus sings the all the Jesus, 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 sweetest name I know, fills my every longing, keeps me singing as I go. Feasting on the riches of his praise, resting neath his sheltering wings, always looking on. Take a moment now to take a look around and greet the ones around you. Good morning, and welcome to St. Andrews. My name is Melanie Hall, and I serve on the church's nominating committee. If you're a first-time guest with us this morning, we are so glad you have chosen to worship with us. Please stop by the welcome table outside following worship to receive more information about the church. I invite everyone to please take a moment to fill out a Connect card found in the pew rack in front of you. We ask you to place them in the offering plate later in the service. We encourage you to read through your bulletin or visit saumc.life for your next steps, like making Fellowship Cafe reservations, registering for events, online giving, and more. Now I invite you to join me for a great morning of worship.
everyone. You are my strength when I am weak. You are the treasure that I seek. You are my all in all. Seeking you as a precious jewel. Lord, to give up I'd be a fool. You are my all in all. Jesus, Lamb of God, worthy is your name. Jesus, Lamb of God, worthy is your name. Taking my sin, my cross, my shame, Rising again, I bless your name. You are my all in all. When I fall down, you pick me up. When I am dry, you fill my cup. You are my all in all. Jesus, Lamb of God, worthy. The scripture reading this morning is from Joel chapter 2, verses 27 and 28, and Matthew chapter 3, verses 13 through 17. You will know that I am in the midst of Israel and that I am the Lord, your God. No other exists. Never again will my people be put to shame. After that, I will pour out my spirit upon everyone. Your sons and your daughters will prophesy. Your old men will dream dreams, and your young men will see visions. At that time, Jesus came from Galilee to the Jordan River so that John would baptize him. John tried to stop him and said, I need to be baptized by you, yet you come to me. Jesus answered, allow me to be baptized now. This is necessary to fulfill all righteousness. So John agreed to baptize Jesus. When Jesus was baptized, he immediately came up out of the water. Heaven was open to him, and he saw the Spirit of God coming down like a dove and resting on him. A voice from heaven said, This is my Son, whom I dearly love. I find happiness in him. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Well, it's an awesome time. We need you to get used to that word awesome because we're going to use it several times in our message today. It's awesome because we're dealing with the baptism of Jesus. And it's awesome because we're dealing with your baptism. It's awesome because we had a baptism of two children in the previous service. This season of the year is time to talk about the baptism of Jesus, and it is an awesome time. So what in your life has been an awesome moment for you? You've heard the scripture read, the prophet Joel, and you've heard that scripture many times about dreaming dreams and visions and whatever. Joel is forecasting something that's going to come. And it's going to be an awesome thing when God pours out his spirit upon his people. From Matthew, that scripture that was read, of course, has to do with the baptism of Jesus himself. And that was indeed an awesome time. So in your mind, in your imaginations, some of you have been to Jericho. Some of you have not. Probably most of us have not. But if you walk up toward Galilee from Jericho and walk by the Jordan River, you will go by a place where tradition says that John the Baptist was 
baptizing. Now, we've called him John the Baptist because he was baptizing. That makes a lot of sense, doesn't it? His name was John, and he was a cousin of Jesus. If you read the, the birth narratives of the scripture, you know that incident between Elizabeth and Mary and the baby moving in her womb and all of that. If you don't know that, then shame on you. Go home and read it. <laughs> because we just don't have time to read all of the pertinent scripture, but we have enough for us to focus our attention, but it was an awesome time. Walk with me up that road to the place where John was baptizing. It was not a quiet, calm time. John the baptizer would not have made, he would not have made it in the United Methodist Church because he was preaching, preaching hellfire and brimstone. He was telling those folks, you brood of vipers, who warned you to flee the wrath to come? Or in other words, as the contemporary version read, you children of snakes. Does that not impress you? But the people listening to him, this man dressed in animal clothing, this man who ate locusts and honey, they were listening to him and they were being convicted of their sin. They were repenting. And it was a baptism of repentance. You see, the Christian church was not yet. The Christian faith was not yet. He was not baptizing anyone in the name of Jesus. He was, it was a repent, baptism of repentance. These were Jewish folks. It was a noisy crowd. It was not calm and sedate. But then Jesus walked up. Now, the book of Matthew nor the other gospels tell us much of anything about what happened to Jesus from the time they left Egypt to the time he shows up at the Jordan River. But Jesus shows up and he says to John, his cousin, and you remember that part of the story, he said to John, I want you to baptize me. Now that's a loose translation. I see right now you've got to loosen up a little bit. You too, don't get too tight on us here. So we're, so we're ad-libbing a little bit, all right? And John the Baptist said, ain't no way. Now, he probably didn't use that word either. But, but if you read the scripture, you understand there's a lot of hesitancy going on. Jesus wants to be baptized. John the Baptist says, I'm not doing that. But Jesus prevailed. He said, we must do it. It's necessary. And so he was baptized. But there, that's when it starts. Can you see it? The heavens opened. Jesus came out of the water. That doesn't happen every day. And you can visualize that however you want to, but the heavens opened. And there was a word. But before the word, the Holy Spirit descended. Came upon Jesus. In all power. All promise. All presence. And then that word. Different from what we read. You're more familiar with it. That word of God says. This is my son in whom I am well pleased. Is there any other word besides awesome? You see, I know we overworked that word, and I honestly tried to find another word. I even went to the thesaurus. Is that the way you pronounce it? I don't use that book much. I can't even pronounce it, Roger's or something like that. But I couldn't find another word. Awesome says it all. And that moment, it was an awesome moment. Now, Jesus was ready to go. Because, see, in the book of Matthew, Jesus moves immediately from the baptism into the wilderness. He's ready to confront Satan. Forty days and forty nights, tempted by Satan. He's just received his credentials, as it were. Not adopted. That's a whole other thing. Heresy. Don't, don't, don't go there. <laughs> but 
He had been claimed and he had been named just like you when you were baptized or when you committed your life to God. This thing of baptism of Jesus, it was awesome. And there's no other word to explain it. I hope your life has had a lot of those moments. If you've had any at all, would you nod your head? Well, I see three. <laughs> okay. It, it, sometimes it's the end of something we've worked hard for. Sometimes we have worked and struggled and we finally got that promotion we wanted. It, it, whatever it is, you, it's a, the beginning maybe of, of something wonderful, that awesome moment that you've experienced. And we thank God for those kind of moments. At other times, though, that may be a, that awesome moment may be the, the, the beginning of something, not the end of something. Like, like when you get married. Now, you, that was an awesome moment, wasn't it? <laughs> I, I, did so, I saw no name, no, no heads doing this. Awesome. That's the beginning of something great. But sometimes those awesome moments may be the, the end of something, but also the beginning of something. Like when you get a college degree. Not everybody is able to do that, but many of us here have college degrees. And, and we thought that that was the end of something. No more book learning. No more midnight oil. No more exams to take. Boy, did you get fooled. Because not only was it the end of something, it was the beginning of something. Something really big. We just celebrated the uh, Martin Luther King Jr.'s day and his I Have a Dream speech. That speech wasn't the beginning of something big because the civil rights movement was already moving and there were a lot of other uh, good leadership there. But Martin Luther King Jr. rose to the top there and he made this speech. And when he made this speech, I Have a Dream speech, it was an awesome time. And it fueled the civil rights movement, if you will. It was something big. The prophet Joel, as we just read his, his words, his speaking for God. The prophet Joel was, as I said earlier, was looking for something big to happen. And it did happen. It has happened. The baptism of Jesus. An awesome moment when the power and the presence of God came upon him. This is my son. I've claimed him. I've empowered him. I've given him a task. And the world began to change. What have you done with your awesome moment? What have you done that changed you? or changed your environment. There's a mountain climber, I am told, that did not make the peak of the mountain. His goal was to get to the top, but he didn't make it. So he came back down from the mountain, and as he walked away from the mountain, he turned and he pointed to the mountain, and he said, I'll be back. Mountains don't change, but men do. Baptism is a moment of change. It isn't a mountain at all. It's a time of change for us. It may be the beginning of something big. Baptism. Baptism. It's important. Again, we baptized two children this morning. A four-year-old and a two-year-old. And yes, mom and dad took the vows. But the time will come when those children will claim those promises for themselves and make their own commitment to Christ. But it's, it's an awesome moment, whether it's a parent of, a, of an infant or whether it's a confirmation class or whether it's someone like you and me who finally give ourselves to God. It's an awesome, awesome time. Baptism is not the end of anything. It's the beginning. My secretary in Jacksonville, she and her husband had been raising this baby since he was an infant. 
And he now was five years old. And they adopted him. Only parents that the child ever knew. And another, we got another Mary and Joseph here. They adopted the child. And after the adoption, the boy, little boy said to mom, now I want to be baptized. Five years old. Why, she says, because then I'll know I really belong. Now, don't let that go too quickly, because it's out of the mouths of babes, as we say. When you do that baptismal thing, you're a child of God. We're children of God together. We're brothers and sisters to one another. We belong to each other. We don't need a five-year-old boy to tell us that, but I hope that we already know this. It was for that boy and his family, it was the start of something big. Now, Jesus was baptized, and it was the continuation, if you will, because of all of our salvation began way back in the creation, so that's a whole other issue. But from here on, this baptism of Jesus he picked up the work of salvation, and that took him to the cross. But from that point on, the world was changing. Indeed, we began to mark our history according to B.C. and A.D. You will remember that. That's been changed. So again, how did your baptism or your confirmation, I know we come to that moment in life where we surrender to God in a lot of different ways, but at that moment, when the light came on and you said, I surrender all to him, what did it mean? How did it impact you? Whether we are parents of a child, a confirmant, or an adult, if you will, it's that moment we used to use the grace of God, just one word, grace. And then we have some biblical, uh, academic kind of folks who who identified three different ways to say that. So here, here they say it's, it's a time when prevenient grace, that's the grace of God working within you from the time you come into this world and trying to prevent you from going astray. Okay, well, it's enough for that. Prevenient grace, the saving grace, and the sanctifying grace, it's when all of the grace of God put together came down to tell you, I've claimed you. You're mine. And you say, God, you're mine. God claims us, and we claim him. Something like the baptism of Jesus, if you will. To discuss the amount of water used is to miss the point. But there are a lot of good discussions about that, about how much water you should use to be baptized. And... Uh, some of you know what I'm going to tell you about my brother, who was a good Southern Baptist boy, and I was until I saw the light, <laughs> with, a, with apologies to our Southern Baptist friends. My mother taught Sunday school in a Baptist church till she died, but I had a man go out from the earlier service and said, well, I belong to the Baptist church. He was laughing about that. He agreed with me. It wasn't the amount of water that was used. But, but back to my brother and I, going down Bell Shows, riding in a car. He was still in the Baptist church. I was able, able to get him converted, though. He was insisting that you had to be immersed. If you couldn't do the sprinkling or the pouring, you had to, well, we United Methodists, we'll do whatever you want because we know it's not the amount of water that's important. But my brother was saying, you had to be immersed. And I said, George, are you telling me that you're not even going to be in heaven if you're not immersed? Well, he knew he was on thin ice because he said, well, no, but if you're going to be a Southern Baptist, you're going to be immersed. <laughs> See, you know and I know baptism is not about the water. It's about the heart. In the case of the children, it's the heart of the parents. Mom and dad doing what they promised to do. So that child, when that child gets the age of accountability, as we say, will make 
the decision to follow Jesus. I was not baptized as an infant. I was not baptized as a child, but I was baptized as a teenager. And of course, as a teenager, I was, I thought I knew everything, don't all teenagers, but I really didn't know very much. But I was sitting in a pew, Riverside Baptist Church, on Tampa Street, Florida, Nebraska, in Tampa, Florida. E.C. Abernathy is the pastor. He helped to tie the knot for Ina and me. We had a Methodist and a Baptist. Tied it good. 64 years, so far it's working. <laughs> Sitting in that pew that day, our pastor got up on the front pew. He was short of stature. And he'd walk up and down. When he retired, they cut a section out of that pew and gave it to him because he had literally worn a path in that front pew. Nobody dared sit on that front pew. But as he gave the invitation, my Sunday school teacher sitting behind me leaned over and said, don't you think it's about time? Well, I knew it was time. I wanted that time. My heart knew that. I wanted to be a Christian. I wanted the world to know I was a Christian. Even though I was a naughty teenager, I knew what I needed to do. But I needed somebody to nudge me. And so I went forward. I made my commitment, which led, of course, to me being baptized. I didn't fully understand that. But God did. And I abused his grace so many times since I was 15 years old. He didn't give up on me. He was patient kind, forgiving, still forgives, folks. You can have a clean slate anytime you want it. Every Friday morning, there's 12 or 15 men line up with this right here on their knees, and they pray for you. You guys, you can come out. We'd like to have you. In the course of their intercessory prayer, they also are asking forgiveness for themselves. God still hears us and forgives us. You see, we follow Jesus in baptism. We follow him in ministry. We follow him in death. But it's hallelujah time because we follow him also in the resurrection. But for us, between the baptism or whenever that moment was and our leaving this world, what is it that we were commissioned to do? What is it that God wanted us to do? You see, we're not just saved from something. We are saved to something. Not saved just from sin, although we are, but we're saved to serve. Now, Paul emphasizes this in Ephesians, the second chapter. We were created in Christ Jesus to do good things. And that verse continues, God has planned for these good things. So let's not disappoint God. Like Jesus, we were baptized with power. We are filled, we were baptized in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. We are filled with all that is necessary to be an awesome, awesome witness for God. He has planned it that way. So as we later partake of Holy Communion, this precious sacrament, another, another awesome time, I'm inviting you and myself always to reflect on that moment, whenever it was in your life, when you knew you belonged to God and you knew you belonged to to each other. I hope you've had that kind of experience. But if you haven't, you can, before you leave here today, you can give your life to Christ. You can let him come in. You can surrender if you've not done it before. And you can have that awesome experience of knowing that you're a child of God and you belong to each other. With the baptism, 
It's the start of something big. With the Holy Sacrament, we confirm something big. It's an awesome, awesome thing. And there's no other word that describes it any better. I'm not Garrett. Garrett, though, is, is teaching in the confirmation class this hour, so he's not with us right now. But we want to come to that time in our worship service where we have been from the time you walked into the sanctuary, that is, in an attitude of prayer, attitude of love, attitude of acceptance and inclusion and all of this, you know. But right now, we want to have a our own congregational pastoral prayer. So in preparation for that, we, we won't take a long time, but if we, we'll take whatever time we need. So you tell me what it is on your heart, whether it's a praise or whether it's a need. Do we have someone? Do you want us to pray for? Yes, in the back. Oh, Tim Ehrlich has had surgery and He's out of surgery, but we're not sure the condition. We're going to claim healing, okay? All right. Anyone else? Yes.
Okay, prayers to John. Got it. Good. Anyone else? Well, it's our custom for some of us who want to come and kneel at the altar with me to come at this time, and we'll have our, our prayer together. Would you join me? You've heard us, O oh God, as we've shared our hearts from your word and from the pulpit as we've talked about these things that really have been important in our lives, these, these awesome moments we're counting and we're calling them. These moments, O oh God, when, when you have touched our lives in a significant way and, and life did change. Life took on a whole different dynamic and we became your kids. And so, Father, in these moments, we, we are your people. All of us who, who are sitting in the pew or kneeling here at the altar, Father, we, we come as one voice to offer words of praise to you, adoration for you. We do not have enough words to express what needs to be said about you, but you know that, and you will take what we have to offer. So, Father, please hear our words of grace. Of praise and, and gratitude for who you are and what you've done in our midst. We do bring before you, we've named some folks that need your touch, but Father, John and Tim, but, but Father, there, there are others in our hearts that we did not name. There's a long list, Father, just in this church family. We, we know just so many that need to know you have touched their lives. Embrace them, speak to them, encourage them and bring healing, we pray. And Father, even as we ask for that, we, we are mindful of our own sin, and we do pray that you will forgive us for having sinned against you and each other. And as a church, enable us, Father, to move forward. Just a local church here named St. Andrews, Father, but, but all of your churches around the world, the body of Christ, the universal church, Father, your people, of many different voices, many different colors, many cultures. But we belong to you, Father, and we belong to each other. And so we're thankful. There are people who work for justice. There are people who work to feed the hungry. There are people who do so many things for you and for each other. Bless those ministries that we share. And in these moments, Father, as we think about our church and all of us gathered here and some who are not with us today, we just pray that your blessings would continue to empower us so that we go forth into the world and share the marvelous love and grace that you have for each one of us. So, Father, we come now. We offer our prayers, and we offer them in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord, our Savior, your Son, whom you claimed already. Thank you, Father. In his name, amen. Giving is more than a responsibility. It is a privilege. More than an act of obedience, it is evidence of our faith. The ushers will now receive our gifts, tithes, and offerings. You can also give online at saumc.life. Gentle. 
God, as we bring our tithes and offerings to your altar, we confess that many of us have longed to be wise with money, as the world understands it, accumulating and building our balances and portfolios. The, the Apostle Paul has called us to live in ways that often seem foolish to the world, and we know that means being as extravagant in generosity and reckless in our compassion. Help us on the journey to loosen our grip on our money and possessions and live the compassion to which your son has called us. In his name we pray. Amen. Christ our Lord invites to his table all who love him, who earnestly repent of their sins and seek to live in peace with one another. Therefore, let us confess our sin before God and one another. Merciful God, we confess that we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have failed to be an obedient church. We have not done your will. 
We have broken your law. We have rebelled against your love. We have not loved our neighbors, and we've not heard the cry of the needy. Forgive us, we pray. Free us for joyful obedience. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Hear the good news. Christ died for us while we were yet sinners. That proves God's love for us. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Glory to God. Amen. And the Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and a joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. You formed us in your own image and breathed into us the breath of life. When we turned away and our love failed, your love remained steadfast. You delivered us from captivity, made covenant to be our sovereign God and spoke to us through the prophets. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you, and blessed is your Son, Jesus Christ. Your Spirit anointed him to preach good news to the poor, to proclaim release to the captives, and recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed, and to announce that the time had come when you would save your people. He healed the sick, fed the hungry, ate with sinners, by the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. When the Lord Jesus ascended, he promised to be with us always in the power of your word and Holy Spirit. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took bread gave thanks to you, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples and said, Take and eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And when the supper was over, he took the cup, gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples and said, Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ has risen. Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and the blood of Christ that we may be for the world the body of Christ redeemed by his blood. By your spirit make us one with Christ one with each other and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet through your son Jesus Christ and with the Holy Spirit in your holy church all honor and glory is yours almighty father now and forever and with the confidence of the children of God let us pray our father who art in heaven hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. 
And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Because there is one loaf, we who are many are one body, for we all partake of the one loaf. The bread which we break is our sharing in the body of Christ. And we will have opportunity to partake of the body and of the blood as we continue in this sacrament. And then, likewise, he took the cup and he gave thanks, for this indeed was the sharing of the blood of Christ. The table is prepared. We do have gluten-free bread if you need that. We'll ask those who are prepared to help us serve if you would come forward at this time. And you're invited to come. The table has been prepared.
Anyone else? No, okay. If you want me to take that, I will. You don't have to come up here. Let's share in this closing prayer. Eternal God, we give you thanks for this holy mystery in which you have given yourself to us. Grant that we may go into the world in the strength of your spirit to give ourselves for others. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Please stand for the opening hymn. The closing. <laughs> hey, streaming people. <laughs> King eternal, the day of March has come. Henceforth in the fields of conquest, thy tents shall be our home. Through days of preparation, thy grace has made us strong. And now, O King eternal, we lift our battle song. Lead on, O King eternal, till sin's fierce war shall cease, and holiness shall whisper the sweet amen of peace. For not with swords loud clashing, nor roll of stir rejoin, with deeds of love and mercy, the heavenly kingdom come. Lead on, O King eternal, we follow not with fears, for gladness breaks like morning where'er thy face appears. Thy cross is lifted o'er us, we journey in this light. The crown awaits the conquest, lead on, O God of might. And will you hear the benediction? Now may the grace and the love and the mercy of God the Father, the Son, and His Holy Spirit go and abide with each and every one of us both this day and forevermore. Amen. 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 Jesus.